Right, parents, we have to leave in precisely two minutes. Uh, we understand this is an upsetting time, but if you'd make the goodbyes as short and sweet as possible, please, and then we will take them to the safety of the countryside. So please say your fond farewells. <laughs> please by VP. Okay, when we go into the classroom we are going to be getting straight onto the train. You will have set places on the train. I would like you to listen very carefully. Okay, on we go. The first children that I would like to get onto the train are Sissy, Isaac, Lizzie and Hazik. And if they could sit in this carriage please, quickly. Making cross-curricular links between subjects that the children are studying is a good way to cover a subject in greater depth, therefore making the learning more meaningful and memorable. We held an evacuation day to help develop the children's speaking, listening, writing and design and technology skills, as well as broadening their understanding of what life would have been like for children during World War II. Now, I want you to think about how you felt when you had to say goodbye to your parents, not knowing when you were going to see them next, not knowing whether your parents would be safe left in the city behind you. So if I come round and tap you on the shoulder, you can carry out thought and feeling taps to encourage the children to empathise with the possible emotions of a World War II evacuee. What did you feel? How did you feel? Uh, um, I felt upset. I thought I never knew what was going to happen to me. I thought I was never going to see my mum again. I thought I was going to cry. I'm sure a lot of you have been on long journeys. It might be a long plane journey, a car journey, a train journey. What games or activities would you play, Nathan? Um, I'd usually um, look up at the sky and I'd see whether the clouds would form any shape. Well, my mum's got like a little mini travelling chest there and the pieces are like pegs, so it's quite useful because it's only about that big, so sometimes we play that. When the windows get misty, I would draw with my finger. <laughs> Hands up if you think World War II children might have been able to do that. They might have been able to draw a picture of the window that was condensation. That is a fantastic game-ish. Now I'm going to introduce you to a World War II game which is called Beetle. Why not play historically appropriate games that children of that period of time would have played to pass the time on their long train journey? Here we are, a genuine World War II game, round one of Beetle. I can't wait to find out who's going to be the winner. Remember, you have to have a two to start. Ready, steady, go! <laughs> two minutes only before the selectors arrive, I would like you to tell the person next to you some interesting information about the family that you have left behind. What's his name again? Putting children into talk partners allows them to develop their ideas in a safe and supportive environment. And I miss my dad because he really helped me in my education. I miss my brother and my... Right, children! Everybody sitting up straight. We have the selectors are here. Not enough muscle on that one there, townsfolk. Where are you from? Yeah. Bristol. <laughs> you ever done any proper work? Yeah. Oh, you look like a strong lad. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let me see. Can you show me your sweeping technique? <laughs> Could you just put your back into it a little bit more? Yeah, I'll take that one. Take that one. Thank you. I can only take four. I can't afford any. Wave goodbye to your friends. Now, I want you to quickly in your head decide whether you are having a good experience of being evacuated or whether you are having a bad experience. Now, can everyone just close their eyes? Okay, open your eyes, everybody. You are now, it 
it's the first day of school at your new country school. This is no longer a classroom, it's a playground. I want you to imagine you're seeing all these children from your old school for the first time since you've been evacuated. Right, the school bell is ringing, ding, ding, ding. Off you go. Chat in the playground. I'm an only child here, so I have so many jobs to do. I get to go and pick the up the trees and pick the apples. As children are carrying out their role plays, you could walk around the classroom and assess a particular aspect of speaking and listening, such as are your children able to explore complex issues through role play? And we'd like you to imagine that you are writing a letter home to the parents that you said goodbye to this morning and you're going to be just tell the children that their letters are going to be sent home to their parents. This gives the children a real purpose and audience for their writing. Who can tell me what type of writing are we going to be doing today when we write a letter? What type of writing is it? A story? Are we going to be writing a story? Are we going to be writing instructions? What? Is it a recount? It is a recount. Fantastic. What is it important that you do in a recount when you're retelling events? It doesn't have to be in chronological order. In fact, that's and an amazing. Past tense. It has to be in chronological order. Now, Phoebe. Has you can use tea bags to create old fashioned writing paper. This helps the children to remember when they're writing that they're actually stepping back in time. Your World War II paper, everybody. Be careful, it's his very historical. Imagine we're going to describe the train journey. It'd be a bit boring and you'll let it just go, we got on a train, six hours later we got to Devon. You haven't told your parents anything about what happened on the journey. What else did you experience on the train journey this morning? Um, well, maybe like the scenery or the noises that the train made or what the train looked like or who you sat next to. After a whole morning of stepping into the shoes of a World War II evacuee, the children had a wealth of ideas and personal experience to draw on when writing their letters. This type of learning is particularly valuable for visual and kinesthetic learners. Right, guys, I'm going to leave you to work really independently to write your gold medal recount. And remember, this is going in an envelope and is going to be posted to your parents. So it's your chance to show off what you know about writing recounts and what an amazing writer you are. By not telling the children how to write their letters or what content to include, you can use their letters for APP for assessing pupils' progress in writing. gold star for that because that is including thoughts and feelings isn't it? You can use gold stars or any other reward system to give specific feedback to individual children about areas that they're making progress in their writing or the meeting of specific targets set. Dear Mum and Dad, I felt physically sick after having to leave you this morning because I didn't know if I'm ever going to see you again. They marched us onto the train as quickly as possible. Reluctantly I slouched down onto my seat in the carriage. There's a boy called Jack. He seems like a nice lad. Jack said he wants to be evacuated to a farm with a couple that always grin from ear to ear. Finally, that was the end of my extremely exhausting day. Lots of love, William. P.S. I hope to see you soon. Oh, somebody's kissing the letter. That's beautiful. <laughs> Come on, children. Think of your parents. God bless them. afternoon we're going to be building some model Anderson shelters but before we actually build model ones, replica ones, I want us to have a look at some pictures of real Anderson shelters. Make cross-curricular links between subjects. This helps to deepen the children's understanding and skills within a topic. In this particular lesson I taught design and technology within a history lesson as well as bringing in some science. Um, who can tell me what 
properties are you going to be looking for? Are you going to be looking for heavy materials? Are you going to be looking for... Would it, would it have to be fire resistant? Oh, what a wonderful word. You can bring scientific vocabulary into a design and technology lesson to encourage the children to reflect on the properties of materials. In this particular lesson, children were exposed to or used words such as malleable and fire resistant. I think it should be kind of an arch shape because an arch is like a really strong shape. Also, triangulation makes it stronger as well. Lonnie? Um, it has to be flexible. <gasps> Does anyone know a word beginning with M that means something similar to flexible? I'll introduce you. It's a word called malleable. So something that you can manipulate. So time to put you into pairs. You can go over to the table and then I would like you to choose the material. And we're going to have half the class at a time so you can actually take the materials that you would like to make your model. Use recycled materials that are cheap and easily available. Ask parents for any old materials that they no longer require. Using recycled materials is a fantastic way for children to see that things that are no longer needed can actually be reused. This supports our eco-school status, which encourages children to take responsibility for their own environment. we make sure they're all tested in the same way because if we, if we tested them in different ways it wouldn't be a fair test Phoebe um, one of them is drop the ball from the, from the same height so if you drop one lower sneak a bit of science into your lesson by encouraging the children to think about how their models should be tested fairly five four three, three two, two one. one. Oh. Oh, look, if you let go, it's slightly bit... damaged, but they ne it didn't completely. Yeah. Two, Two, one. one. Oh, oh. <laughs> it bounced yeah. off. Would you change the materials? Would you say, no, I wouldn't use the same materials again? Or would you change them, sissy? Um, I probably use the same material because it was quite, it was very really flexy, flexible and um, easy to, to use. Evaluation is an essential part of the design process as children need to reflect upon whether they were successful in their completion of the task and to think about what they would do differently if they did it again. What does that mean? I did this lesson in one afternoon, but to further develop children's skills in all areas of the design process, you could devote a whole lesson to each part of the process. For example, a whole afternoon spent generating ideas for an initial design. You've got 12 minutes if you're really quick. You might have time to make another one. 